Wagner in the name of the Chair of Business Information Systems Engineering, especially Information Management from the TU Dresden. Here with Professor Dr. Eric Schoep, Ornella Vladi, Alexander Klaus, Esmir Demarsch and Anna Leixenring, who will be the presenters today. So I would like to take this opportunity at first to take to thank the Value X Consortium and all other participants for coming and preparation and I'm looking forward to an exciting event. First information, we're going to record this event. If you don't want to be recorded, keep your camera and microphone muted. Special contributions go to Ornella Vladi, who will present the outcome of the Albanian Needs Report, Esmir Demash, who will present the evaluation of the spring semester at his university regarding COVID-19, and Christina Stefanelli and her team for a great dissemination work. I'm here today with my colleagues, and we come in the name of Professor Schaub from Lehrstuhl Wirtschaftsinformatik in Special Information Management. I would like to get off my chest again that this is not an advertisement for the field report. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat. We will try to answer them as completely as possible with the support of the moderators at the end of the presentation. So let's have a look at the agenda what we will do today. So at first we will have a short introduction, then Ornella will present the Albanian Needs Report outcome. Then we will hand over to Professor Schaub, who will show us the VCL history, current remote teaching practices. And then I will present the concrete realization of VCL arrangements for the practical and remote learning during Corona. But before we begin, uh, let's have some rules for an appropriate run of the event. It would be very nice if every participant keeps microphone and video muted and activate microphone and video after the moderator picks you. If you have any questions, post it into the chat during the live session. Use the raise hand function during question and answer sessions. Be precise in your explanations, avoid long stories to allow further questions from other participants and recognize diversity, respect everyone joining the event. So let's see who is presenting today. So at first, Professor Shaw, he's the holder of the chair and um, gives support and solutions for complex university and company learning environments through suitable e-learning arrangements. He's also a knowledge-oriented teamwork through collaborative social software systems. Then Onela Vladi, whose project lead partner and coordinator at UIT in Albania, is responsible for project development and partnerships at UIT and public finance risk, risk management and supply chain management. And then Mathis Altman, me, uh, who is responsible for the didactical design of e-learning scenarios, project managing capacity building and the improvement of group formation processes. So now I want to hand over to Ornella Vladi, who is presenting the virtual collaborative teaching and learning in Albania. Thank you very much. And the presentation goes to Ornella. Thank you, Matthias. Good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be today with you and have the opportunity to introduce the Albania Needs Report. Just a brief introduction. My name is Ornella Vladi. I'm part of the European University of Tirana Office for Project Development and Partnerships, and I'm, uh, I'm part of the ValueX project team and today presenting the work done in collaboration with the whole consortium. I have prepared a very short presentation and let me just share it with the rest of the team and continue with my presentation. Here we, here we are. Yep. So as Matt is introduced, I'm going to briefly introduce and uh, briefly uh, share with you the key findings from the National Needs Assessment Report, which is a work done in the last nine months, I would say, in close collaboration with all Albanian partner universities in this project, as well as under the close uh, supervision and uh, with continued support from the EU partners. I'd greatly uh, thank you, our uh, partners from Technical University of Dresden, NADA from Slovenia, and the UNIMED, excellent UNIMED team, for their support in improving the report and having now a final version version of this document. Uh, I'll 
just briefly stop the key findings and details since the report will be available very soon in the website of the project. Today we'll stop to the key concepts that drive, uh, drove the research on the state of art of the use of VCL in the Albanian context. After to go very briefly, maybe I'll skip the part of uh, literature review. We all Albanian partners in close with the support of the EU partner. Uh, Wonder made a detailed comprehensive literature review uh, on the digitalization, international virtual teaching and learning, best practices and the existing literature in the Albanian context. The third part of the report concerns the Albanian baseline report, which is a clear assessment or a detailed assessment of the current state of art at each partner university here in Albania. The fourth part of the report is about an online survey conducted with academic staff of partner universities. And at the end of the presentation, I will stop to the key conclusions of this report and the main recommendations uh, driven by our uh, academic experts which are uh, contributors or the main contributors to this report. Editors of this report are representatives from uh, six partner Albanian partner universities. And here we have a long list of uh, people that we are great, grateful for the contribution provided to the finalization of this report. So it was not an individual or the work done by two or three or four staff members. It's a huge team of contributors. Thank you to everyone for putting something in this report or for your valuable contribution to making this report possible. Key concepts, key concepts uh, based on which this report was designed are virtual collaborative learning or VCL, which is even which is the core concept of the ValueX project. Virtual or blending mobility, internationalization at home, blended learning and teaching digital learning portfolio, ICT-based teaching and learning, online learning validation and recognition, and e-learning. All those are concepts that uh, better than me, Professor Schaub after me will uh, maybe briefly introduce to you, so I would rather prefer to skip them. The pre report was prepared in the framework of the Work Package 1 preparatory phase which is uh, focused on the research and impact assessment. There were foreseen five different tasks. And uh, the final report is somehow a comprehensive representation of all findings uh, that were uh, arised from the, from, from the implementation of these tasks or these activities. We have now uh, performed or we have now conducted the first session of expert forums in May 2020 and we are preparing or getting ready for the next row of expert forums which will be led by the Alexander, Alexander Moiseu University of Duras. The task two, three and four are already completed, five as well. And the WET our European University of Tirana is the lead partner of this activity. I'll just Keep the part of literature review since uh, better than me and better than maybe us Albanian partners, EU partners will provide you with a brief introduction of key concepts in the field and some definitions of the key concepts. So I'll go straight to the part that directly relates to our work done for these tasks of the project. As I said, the part of the report concerns the Albanian base baseline report, which is just a kind of assessment of the state of art at each partner university in the ValueX project. We are six Albanian universities in the consortium. Two of them are private higher education institutions and four of them are public universities located in different cities, Škodra, Duras, uh, Korča and Elbasan. The report was a brief uh, institutional overview followed by the current practices, strategies and perception concerning online learning. After uh, responsible staff members at each university were asked to briefly introduce uh, with details on the staff involvement and motivation, their motivation in online teaching and learning. The existing infrastructure and resources available for online delivery, student experience with online learning, and 
What is the current involvement in various or different projects relevant to the Value Act project topic and any future plans for other relevant projects in the field? So basically, this was just a kind of state of art or assessment of each partner university current state. So for the next step, EU partners would be uh, would, would be possible for the EU partners to tailor made uh, capacity building programs for uh, based on the identified needs and current state of art. The most uh, crucial, I'd say, part or the most important part of the uh, national assessment needs report is the academic survey report, which was an online survey launched among the partner uh, universities here in Albania. It was organized in four uh, parts and 54 questions. Part one was concerned the demographic data at each partner university and the asked or survey staff members. The second part concerned the virtual mobility, the uh, experience of the staff members concerning virtual mobility and their attitude or approach towards various activities or future, future engagement in such a kind of incentives. The uh, third part concerned the digital learning resources and training. So uh, staff members were asked on the availability of digital learning resources and the training they have received or they that may need concerning the use of these digital learning resources. And the fourth part was kind of addition to the initial plan due to the actual situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. The total number of uh, the total academic staff of partner universities in the Value X project is 1,319. Uh, however, the total valid survey collected is 273, which is still a reasonable number of the collected academic online surveys. Key demographic, demographic data on the surveyed participants is the ratio female to male, which is 65.8% to 34.2%, uh, which means that uh, there is a higher percentage of uh, surveyed females concerning males uh, at partner universities here in Albania. Uh, a high major majority of the surveyed academic staff comes from social science departments and faculties while the rest comes or represents other departments and faculties. And uh, the majority or almost half of the survey staff members range between 30 to 39 age, years old. Asked about the role of these uh, staff members at their universities was uh, noticed that the majority of them were holders of PhD or doctoral degrees or as assist and acting or working as assistant lectures, while the rest were, were representing either other categories of academic staff, such as professor, associate professor, or uh, technical and administrative staff at partner Albanian universities. Asked about uh, the period or for how long have they worked at the current university where they are employed, it was uh, noticed that the majority of uh, staff members surveyed worked for quite a long time at the university, which means uh, higher than five years. And this uh, somehow helps us in validating the data collected from surveys, since it means that they do already have a kind of uh, relevant experience in their institutions and they do know how things work in their institutions. So they do provide us with valuable information and data on the current state of VCL at their universities. Ask about the experiences they may have concerning uh, international mobility, staff mobility only. It was uh, noticed that it, uh, the statistics indicate that half, half of the uh, survey staff members had the experience with uh, international mobility. It means that only uh, hundred something of, of the surveyed staff members had at least one international mobility at a, part, at a European partner university, whether the rest didn't have such a kind of experience. And uh, asked about the types of the programs, international exchange programs that they have used, the majority of them experience of physical mobility, which means use the key A1 with high possibility, use the key A1 exchange mobilities, or they either moved with different 
projects to other partner universities. Going to the more in details and asking the st academic staff about their experience in online uh, in BCL practices or activities, as well as asked about how comfortable do they feel about the possibility to teach or uh, deliver trainings, course materials uh, in foreign language, so to foreign students, somehow surprisingly, at least for me as an Albanian living in Albania, working in Albania in the higher education sector, uh, over 80% of the surveyed academic staff uh, felt or uh, indicate that they are able to offer their courses online for foreign students, while like 19% something uh, asked or feel that they need more training to be able to transfer their courses to a different, to a foreign language and teach them online to foreign students. Ask about their, uh, how confident academic staff in Albania is in designing digital activities in foreign languages. Here we do have somehow the same results as in the previous slide, with the majority of the survey participants, like over 19% of the participants in this academic survey, indicate that they do either feel confident, very confident, or highly confident in designing digital activities in foreign languages. Asked about the availability of resources and uh, either in foreign languages or in Albanian languages and asked about how suitable the available resources are for the higher education teaching and learning in Albania. Here we have a highly positive uh, feedback, I'd say, with uh, over 80% of the survey participants in the survey indicating that the available resources are sufficient for uh, teaching, online teaching and digital uh, online teaching in Albania, and as well, they are suitable for the higher education uh, teaching and learning in our country. Ask about the confidence uh, of the staff about using digital resources within the rules of copyright in national and international levels, we do have see here again a very positive uh, overview at country levels with uh, over 80% of the participants indicating that they do have a clear understanding on the national and in, at both at national and international level of the rules on copyright and the way on how they should use these rules while designing digital resources or, or while using digital resources. This means that uh, st academic staff in our country highly, uh, is highly committed or has a high level of understanding on how to use the copyright while uh, engaging in VCL practices. Now moving to another question that was directed to the academic staff in this survey, it concerned about uh, concerned the COVID-19 crisis and pandemic outbreak and the survey participants were asked whether the pandemic outbreak had any impact, any significant impact in the way how they used to deliver courses and classes to their students and uh, over 80% of the participants uh, declared or indicated that they moved 100% all the classes from face to face to online teaching and learning. Whether the, well, while the rest uh, indicated that it was not possible to either move, move all the classes or they didn't move none of their classes to online platforms. Before, uh, while Due to the COVID-19 or pandemic outbreak, majority of staff in Albania was forced uh, to move to online teaching due to the current situation. Asked about how it was before, just before the COVID-19, over 60% of the academic staff, staff survey said or indicated that they never used before online teaching. It was just due to the COVID-19, but before that, they used to teach only face-to-face -face at a classroom environment. 
Those are just in a very brief introduction to the key findings from the academic survey, which was conducted among partner universities here in Albania in the Value X, in the framework of the Value X project. Very briefly, I'd go to the key conclusions and key recommendations of the academic team, that academic team of the Value X has drawn based on the key findings from various means and tools used for the preparation of of the Albanian needs report. Concerning the key conclusions, over 40% of participants indicated that they had no previous experience in international staff mobility. Actually, in many of our universities, there are staff members that they do not know at all the, ex the existence of any international staff mobility program or possibility. Therefore, they have uh, no chances at all to access such a kind of program. Over 80% of respondents indicate that they feel really capable on teaching online courses to foreign students. And additionally, they do feel highly confident about their ability to design activities to foreign languages. Over 90% indicate that they can do, they can design courses for foreign students. Third uh, key conclusion that was driven from the report is the suitability of digital resources for online teaching and learning in Albania. Over 80% of um, partner universities in, in the project indicate that the existing resources are sufficient and are suitable for all, uh, online teaching and learning in Albania. And staff as well is highly confident in using them. However, surprisingly, uh, besides the fact that the academic staff in Albania feel highly confident in using online teaching resources, as well as due to the availability of such resources, surprisingly, before COVID-19 uh, pandemic outbreak, mostly of them were not engaged in such a kind of online teaching activities. Additionally, besides their high confidence in uh, using online teaching resources and tools, they uh, mentioned as the key tools used before COVID-19 only images and web-supported multimedia. So maybe what uh, it can be drawn another conclusion from these statistics is the fact that maybe uh, there is a lack of understanding among Albanian academic staff on what is really considered a VCL, a virtual collaborative learning, what is really considered to be e-learning or blended learning. Uh, our colleagues, after my presentation, they will introduce you in greater details with these key concepts. Uh, after that, after that, Asked about the current situation, the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, majority of respondents were forced to move to online teaching and learning, but over 60% of the surveyed participants indicate that they were not ready for these transitions. There is another question mark on these key findings from the online survey. If they before said that, they do feel that they are suitable digital resources. And if they feel that they are uh, qualified enough or they do feel confident about using these resources, how did it come that uh, over 60% of them do not feel ready for the transition from face-to-face -face learning to online learning? So this is something that maybe uh, can be further explored in the next phases of the project of the project and finally the main challenges on the VCL activities implementation in Albania is uh, comes mainly due to the lecturer skills so while they do indicate that they feel highly confident in using digital resources actually the reality is that they do need intensive capacity building project uh, program not only on the use of the VCL tools and technologies, technologies as well, uh, but they do need as well uh, intensive training in didactic and uh, in the way on how they can 
introduce online teaching to their students in the most effective and efficient way to ensure a high return rate, let's say, for both the students and the academic staff. The second uh, main issue or challenge on the VCL implementations at the Albanian context concern, concerns the student adaptation to the online learning. We are now at the phase that we are deciding if, if it's better to move to uh, to move all the courses online or combine somehow perform some blended learning, mixing some face-to-face -face classes with some online classes for the next academic year. Recently, our university decided for that for the second and the third year students, as well as for master students, all the classes will be online. Well, while for first year bachelor students, all classes will be face to face. Uh, however, our students are not happy at all with uh, this decision and they are either trying to find some means and ways to complain and to ask for face to face learning instead of uh, online learning, which makes it uh, quite difficult and challenging at the Albanian context to adopt with uh, VCL practices. Difficult difficulties, uh, regardless of the fact that the academic staff indicates that the availability uh, of the digital resources, as well as their skills and experience in using these resources are sufficient, actually, based on the baseline report uh, and not only, it is very clear that uh, the existing technical, uh, in, the existing infrastructure, ICT infrastructure at most of the Albanian university is not sufficient to support VCL activities at these universities. And among others, the lack of experience is one of the main challenges on adopting VCL practices at Albanian universities. In a very brief and short, the key recommendations from this report are, first of all, to diversify the list of participants in international mobility. As it was indicated before in pre uh, previous slides, uh, it's above 50-50 staff members that uh, were engaged in international mobilities with those that were not engaged in international mobilities. This means that there is a need to diversify the list of participants. Uh, all universities must find means and ways on how to engage more their academic and administrative staff in these kind of experiences so they would be all possible to benefit from the experience of having an international mobility to one of a partner university. Increase the number of MOUs signed among uh, universities, among Albanian universities with European universities, but not only. It's highly recommended to even consider a close collaboration and exchange of experience and ideas among Albanian universities itself. Third recommendation, concern on the implementation of the didactical e-learning framework with professionalized support concepts and realistic and authentic cases. The fourth uh, recommendation, key recommendation, concerns the diversification of the portfolio of the e-learning resources and tools, regardless, regardless what was said by many of the academic staff that the existing resources are sufficient and switchable for the e-learning in Albania. Actually, based on the key findings from other means, other questions in the report, as well as the baseline report, it is clear that Albanian universities need a more diversified e-learning uh, re uh, e resources and tools portfolio, so they'll be able to implement a real VCL environment at their universities. And the last but not the least, a uh, key recommendation at the Albanian context is the continuous capacity building programs to train staff, both academic and administrative, on using e-learning tools and resources. But of course, uh, trainings should not be limited, limited only on the use of these tools, but as well on the didactic and pedagogical uh, aspects of the e-learning would be highly important for the academic staff in Albania. 
This was in a very brief, the introduction or presentation of the Albanian needs report. You can find, uh, you will be able to find the full report published at the ValueX project website. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank Onela, you very Onela. much for this uh, detailed presentation on the Albanian needs report. Very great work. And uh, we're now shifting to uh, the next presentation of uh, Professor Schaub, who will uh, tell us something more about virtual collaborative learning and the framework of virtual collaborative learning. I'm very happy to introduce Professor Schaub, who will now start his presentation. Thank you. So thank you very much for the moderation and thank you very much Ornella for the very deep insight you gave into the current situation in Albania. Let me now try to answer to our auditory the question which must have arrived. What is it all about this VCL, virtual collaboration? Why do we need that? We have far more uh, practical problems at hand now in the shut down time. So trying to give that answer, let me first jump back to the year 2001, 19 years back, the so-called Bologna process objectives, which motivated us in 2001 to start what we are discussing today. So they wrote in 2001, the European education and training system has to encourage the personal growth of European citizens in three aspects. Skills, which means enabling students to work together in groups with specialists from other disciplines, intelligently using existing information and communication technologies. Second, adaptability, the ability to learn about and adjust to new situations while staying in and respecting others. And thirdly, mobility, the skills required in today's international and multicultural society, especially the ability to work and communicate with others across national boundaries, and by this to adapt the challenges of a global economy. That mobility 19 years back was thought as a physical mobility mainly, not to be applicable in the shutdown in the pandemic times. So we, tried very first to think about virtual mobility. And that's what it's all about. Well, this was 19 years. 14 years later, we have a statement, though this was seven years later, calling the university. Think about what jobs your students can get if they follow your courses. It's a reflective question to be answered in 2015, when Perez Sabata and co-authors wrote about having in focus the shift from manufacturing work to knowledge work, the distribution of work over large geographical distances, increasing importance of working from home, what you all came to use in the last month and in the month ahead. The shift from traditional vertical hierarchies to self-managing teams, and last but not least, the rise of the nomadic knowledge worker, which weakens the relationship between employers and employees. So this is a five-year-old societal picture for this picture, for this demand and requirements of society and organizations we have to prepare our students. Can we do that by just giving a front lecture? Imagine that not only you as a professor can read, your students can too. So why do I need to read out of a book? They can do that by themselves. So we could change, not a little bit, but far more to improve and to address this requirement. 
What is the actual situation with the pandemic? Shutdown of on-site classroom learning, rush into e-learning, quite unprepared, home office, new tools, shaky internet connections. We all got used to that. Students and teachers had to get used to many different approaches of e-learning. So students had to face completely different solutions of teachers. Teachers had didactical and technical issues due to unknown software solutions and an e-learning rush without sufficient didactical preparation. Often traditional content focused and frontal instruction was just translated into digital content for individual self-guided learning. Isolated students back in their dormitory without the presence of the experienced teacher or the other peer learners. We all know it's very helpful to be a member of a lively community, to look left and right and see how the other peers interpret what was just told to all of us. And last but not least, the lack of interactivity and on-site experience, especially for new students. That's a problem we still have to tackle and in the next months to come. So virtual collaborative learning. Referring to the Bologna objective slide two slides ago, in the year 2001, we started to work on virtual mobility. The digitalization of learning processes in higher education should foster a virtual mobility, not always a physical Erasmus-based mobility, and should also foster internationalization at home. So in pandemic times, we can invite the whole world online to participate in our lectures, in our seminars and webinars. Why not? Where's the barrier? By this improving the understanding, the global understanding, the intercultural uh, competencies and skills of our and foreign students. Bring them together. And that's what virtual collaborative learning is about, the VCL framework we developed at TU Dresden. It's virtual, online, using new communication channels. It's collaborative. Our students in this framework always work in groups on case studies, benefiting from the experience of others, other disciplines, other countries, other study programs and other experiences. And it's about learning, gaining new knowledge and experience. If you look at the lower colorful uh, part of this slide, you see the timeline from 2001 to 2020. In this timeline, you can register 14 different participating nations. If you count Germany, also it's 15 nations. So we were always looking for international partners to join with their student teams, our students, and we mix small teams of four to six students to collaborate on six, eight weeks to collaborate on cases case stories which should be quite authentic, realistic, and similar to the later situation on the job after graduation. This motivates the students. Our partners from the different countries, of course, have to agree that their students, based on their local study programs and, and orders, examination orders, get ECTS credits and grades out of this practical project. So it's a lot of, of organization uh, before you can start six to eight weeks of collaboration. So the last collaboration we had in the year 2020, I will present shortly in a few, few slides. This winter term, we now start with our VCL project number 65. And if I talk about project, I mean a real virtual mobility master module, which my students at TU Dresden can choose and where they find past partners, peers from another country, and where they collaborate in the English language as a foreign language, where they apply firstly skills in collaboration, in teamwork, 
project management, self-organization, intercultural competencies. And that is quite interesting. And where they can apply their professional, factual knowledge and their methods out of other modules. So <clears throat> it is all an objective embedded in a so-called design science research model. It is a research focus we have. So for 19 years now, we have a running research project. It's action research. Every year, every term, every semester, we reinvent the structure, improve the framework, evaluate the prototype, etc. So 65 modules run, 65 times ECTS credits and grades given. So that's the background. And in the year of 2020, you see the Albanian color first time. Um, our Albanian friends from the ValueX project participated in a VCL project as observers coming to get to know how things work in this complex structure. Our main partner this summer, as last year's summer term, was Iran, the Uni Shiraz University in Iran. Shiraz and TU Dresden have a strategic partnership memorandum of understanding. That's what Ornella mentioned just a minute ago as a demand, as a requirement for Albanian universities. MOUs help us to establish trust, organizational interfaces which enable complex learning arrangements like the VCL framework to run successfully on both sides. Let me give you some historical insight. This model developed, well, I have to shift at least at my screen, already in 2004, uh, 2004 as a topic of a doctoral thesis of my Hungarian uh, PhD candidate, Idriko Balas. This shows the standard framework to be used since 2001. So we have on-site or tele lectures based on, on self-guided learning, readings, online materials. We have a video kickoff. We have an asynchronous collaboration phase and a video conference in the end with split presentations from side to side to side. Then we had just short case work, periods of two weeks or three weeks we learned. And nowadays we have six weeks to eight weeks at least. So just an example from the year of 2009, when we had three countries participating, Riga in Latvia, Konas in Lithuania and TU Dresden. You see me down there on the right side beside my Latvian colleague. I was just participating in a conference in Riga when we opened our virtual collaboration. Down on the left side on the screen, on the TV screen, you see the three participating groups down left, Konas in Lithuania. On the upper, you see me in Riga. No right side, you see my research associate, um, Helena Bukvova from the Czech Republic, who opened at TU Dresden that three nations project. A jump forward to the year 2019, an international cooperation of two universities with 23 students from TU Dresden and 15 students from Shiraz University in Iran. The project seminar was held in English language and it was complemented first time by on-site workshops following the flipped classroom approach. So firstly, we had eight weeks of VCL collaboration. The teams got acquainted, they worked on their case, they had weekly uh, uh, deliverables, they found uh, surprising solutions. It's a complex setting, it's a complex case with open end and, and not just one best solution. It is based on a platform, on a collaborative platform. We used first time last year learning analytics to build up 
information dashboards about the performance of the different student teams, data which you can also throw back, which we will do this winter term first time to give gamification elements back to the student teams, competitive information. How do we perform? How often do we post? How often do we meet? How many uh, posts did we produce? How often did we collaborate jointly in a document, um, et cetera, et cetera? Or how did we perform this week in comparison to last week? So these are all very helpful informations, which on the fourth part um, get addressed to our e-tutors. So the VCL classroom, that virtual classroom where students normally never come together face to face is moderated by qualified e-tutors who supervise and observe their teams and are every day online, not just to check what they did, but also to guide, to help, to inform, to motivate. And so this will be uh, uh, presented in more details by my staff in this afternoon session. But these are four key elements which we can use to improve and tune and optimize the VVL framework. But coming back to this last year's example here, it is something special. First time, as you see on the picture on the right side, the students met after having collaborated for two months virtually. They met in, at HEU Dresden and held three workshops. Um, it was financed, the travel of the Shira students was financed by DAAD. We are very grateful for that. And as a result of these workshops, we have a needs analysis. They had to indicate three things to be changed, improved in the virtual mobility module. And you see, most often was named tools, improvement of the tools, if better feedback by the e-tutors, more information and guidance addressing the role of the e-tutors and their qualification, better time management, the platform, it's again like tools available. The tasks could be more precise or more demanding or more authentic, realistic, change of content, roles, and possible structure. This was named um, needs where to improve and coming to the next round, the next um, design cycle, we firstly changed last year the platform. And so our students since uh, um, winter term 2019-20 are placed collaborating on Microsoft Teams. So we just see here, Microsoft Teams, you are participating today merely as guests, having the video and the chat option. But behind this surface, Microsoft Teams offers the whole functionality of Microsoft 365 out of the cloud. And the students can organize their own teams. They can use, adapt, and enhance their platform by themselves with additional planning tools, operating tools, whiteboards, et cetera, online collaborating and working together as normally you would do it only on site. We were very lucky having set on Microsoft Teams before the pandemic shutdown started. So last summer term, um, our students, even outside that international virtual mobility module VCL, could use these instruments and their licenses in Microsoft Teams, also in blended learning, in completely online learning, in flipped classroom arrangements. These are other models of modern electronic learning being also very helpful to overcome the shortages in the pandemic times. But let us concentrate today on the VCL, on that international virtual mobility. So this year, we have here two other blog articles um, where um, we refer to this year's 2020 collaboration, again, with Shiraz University. You might see beside uh, Mathis Altman and me a picture of the two colleagues from Shiraz University. And it was a very, very interesting story. The students had to simulate 
in a energy in a gas holding company to simulate a situation where that holding wants to go forward for green energy. And what our students did, and we reported it in our blog, was so realistic and authentic and their solutions so interesting that we already got asked by international, um, I think it was Uzbek uh, um, colleagues who thought that we were a skilled um, energy uh, uh, chair, um, but it was just a student story. So the students were working in a very realistic, authentic and, and trustworthy, fictive environment and came out with surprising solutions. It was fun. They worked together on themselves, being active. We did not have to drive them and coming to the assignments. It is also to be said that we can change with this type of of modules we can change from a mere um, summative written exam at the end of the summer term to more formative assignment elements giving a better insight into the process of what students do rather than just the final result so the way is the goal this is my final comment I might also want to ask um, Mathis Altman to provide you in the chat with a link to our um, Berlin conference on, on international mobility and Erasmus from last year, where we have an online uh, paper which you can read with, uh, and get more details about the VCL approach. Now, I thank you very much for your audience and hand back to Mathis Altman. Thank you very much, Professor Schaub, for these uh, interesting insights. I will now take over the screen for a deeper insight on the concrete realization and examples from the case and cover story regarding the Global Trainer SE we had offered in the workshop together with the Iranian participants. So um, just remember, go back to 2019. You remember the screen with the uh, woman and uh, we had a case and cover story. So we had a German company specialized in international and digital education training and the creation and implementation of company-specific e-learning offers was the target for the position pads. So uh, it should support customers during the complex challenges of a digital qualification. So that's the case or cover story, like realistic tasks. So the company also has values. So creativity, innovation and diversity, change of a perspective for holistic capture of reality and the open-mindedness and respect for all cultures, habits and customs. So we invented the Global Trainer SE, offering digital learning offers. The vision was being a global leader in providing effective, customized digital learning services means providing clients with an ubiquitous demand-based, knowledge base, and subsequently giving the employees the tools to find the best solution for the problem. Just to remember, we are now in 2019. The oil and gas case was designed for 2020. So every year there's a new case. But let's have a look at the case from 2019. What was the problem situation? So there's a lack of skilled laborers in Germany. Investments in iron are promising as young Iranians, back to 2019, remember that, have a good level of education and a high amount of qualified but unbound workforce. Skilled laborers from abroad qualified through VCL should solve the shortest. So what are the requirements? The need for a draft concept a pure online binational MBI pro MBA program between Germany and Iran. So knowledge about digital learning environments and cultural characteristics between Germany and Iran. So we designed the following work assignments. At first, the groups had to make a group agreement where they have to write down their rules of collaboration. So they had to discuss within their groups what uh, we want to achieve in this course? Do we want a good grade? When 
are we available for communication when I'm away? Uh, who wants to take the role of the project manager, of the project reporter or researcher? In the second task, they had to design and find a common ontology. And in the third part, they really get into deep into the educational journey. But we are also focusing on cultural dimensions. So in the fourth task, they had to design and uh, to analyze the critical incident of cultural diversities to then come in the fifth part to a draft of the MBA concept. And in the sixth but last assignment, they had a peer review. So the groups themselves exchanged their drafts and um, argued about improvements and gave it back to the other group. And after that, in the final presentation, the groups presented their MBA student concept. So let's have a look at the schedule of collaboration in the virtual classroom 2019. Um, this is more um, a big picture of the whole seminar or project. And you see, since 2018, preparation goes on. There was a memorandum of understanding and the case study Global Trainer SE was designed. At April 5, we had a kickoff in a virtual conference between TU Dresden and Shiraz University. After that, the virtual phase for knowledge acquisition began. You see the phases where the groups had to solve the tasks I've mentioned in the slide before. When they complete the virtual phase, we had a short break and then had the workshops for knowledge consolidation. We had a kickoff for the workshops and get to know because the participants see each other in real for the first time. Then we got a further development of the MBA concepts they designed in the virtual phase, but now in presence. In the second workshop, uh, the profile and requirements for VCL participants were outlined and assessed. And in the last and third workshop, we had some further and deeper topics about the assessment and future gamification of VCL arrangements. Let's see what this is looking like in real. So these are pictures from the on-site workshop at TU Dresden from 30th of June 2019 to 9th of July 2019. 12 participants and Gazem Zalimi as the coordinator and 25 uh, German students joined the workshops. The subject was digitalization in higher education. The first concepts were integrated, digitalized university teaching of both universities in the fields of business management and administration were developed. In addition to the focus on the subject specific interactions an open and intercultural exchange between the students has been done. So the students should develop their understanding of the respective culture of the partner country and have the opportunity to discuss various topics such as new career opportunities in the respective countries that arise in the course of digitalization. For example, community management, how to manage a big community of interest or professional working community, how to design virtual collaborative learning frameworks to integrate other partners as Professor Schaub mentioned before. But maybe let's close about remote learning during Corona. So this year, unfortunately, uh, no workshop was planned due to a lack of, uh, yeah, just uh, the restrictions we had. Um, and the effects and experiences during the crisis from the perspective of an international virtual seminar. So also our seminar this year was held as planned all presentations took place virtually via MS Teams. Some students say that the completely digital semester is more time consuming and they had to reduce the number of courses they attend. But students had no software issues. Issues. Students were more familiar and used a variety of tools to express their solutions. So um, they really are used to the tools. We just need to offer them. The module was designed as a project. We had no exam issues like having all the people in presence here for an exam because um, they uh, had like a project outcome which was graded for this module and 
the students are today prepared with the skill for tomorrow's working environment. When they leave university, they will work online, they will work in international teams, they will collaborate through platforms, have video and audio chats using modern tools for dissemination, for working, for brainstorming, for reflecting, for debating. So, yeah. Let's do it and um, offer the students the possibilities and offer all other tools for a great tomorrow in the working world. Thank you very much from this side. This is the end of our first presentation. We will have a second session at uh, one o'clock, maybe 10 minutes later. I will write you an email soon and um, I'm very happy you all here listening and going this way in the project within value x at this uh, stage i also have to mention all the other partners in the consortium which also had several and further events on the erasmus day that's very 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 great and i'm just so happy to have you all here and to make this erasmus days a real great event for value x for us and for our students Thank you very much. Here you can see our sources and we are now open for a discussion. So please, if you have questions, write them in the chat. Professor Schaub will be available and we can discuss about several things you're interested in. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, feel free, post them in the chat. Or just activate your microphone and camera and ask. We're now open for questions. Maybe at the moment it was just too much information in a compact time. So why not let it trickle down and wait for chat comments and maybe questions will arrive or will be answered without having been posted now in the afternoon session where my staff will go into far more details and will of course demonstrate tools within the Microsoft Teams platform suitable for collaborative approach, suitable also to be used outside of a rigid VCL framework. You can use these tools and functionalities also for your own far more interactive teaching than if you just would place online materials. So. Keep your interest, keep your time, and you might come back this afternoon for the very interesting afternoon session. So thank you all very much. And we're now waiting some more minutes <clears throat> if there arise any questions, but you can also ask uh, at the end of the afternoon session. I will also be available for more questions. Maybe an information, please um, check out the form I've posted for all the ValueX consortium partners. Um, just register that we uh, know that you were here. Would be very great if you complete the form. I will also post it in the next meeting. And uh, we have a first uh, question from Christina Stefanelli. I will read it. So in this period of pandemic and hype of distance teaching, there are concerns related to an in or exclusion which elements of in or exclusion should be taken into account when designing virtual collaborative learning courses? Well, I think if I just volunteer to answer, I think firstly, this has to uh, be in line with 
European rules on user interfaces, on online user interfaces. Um, if you provide just self-organized individual learning online materials or web-based trainings for individual uh, learning in Moodle or any other platform, you must make sure, of course, um, if you have handicapped students um, with uh, um, none or not enough visible uh, visibility. Um, no, um, yes, uh, or, or have other handicaps that you give them alternatives. If they can't see your video, they need to get a text information on that. If they can't read your online text, they need uh, uh, some some a system to to read loud the text information etc but these are aspects independent of the vcl approach these are aspects just related to online materials if it comes to a collaboration if it comes to online teamwork i think um, the approach of having student teams working together and giving them the functionality of conferences with or without video at any time in a, just a second to ask, to discuss. I think people with vis vision handicaps could participate, of course, um, because they can hear, listen, they can talk. They are better graded than being isolated and having to watch online videos, lecture capturing or et cetera. Thank you very much for this answer. Are there further questions within uh, the participants? So please feel free to ask, activate your microphone or camera and uh, ask your question. Another response just coming to my mind when rereading the question. It's a very good question, Christina. Um, we could think about mixing teams of students with handicaps and students without handicaps. Those students without handicaps supporting inside their teams and teamwork their peers with handicaps. So it is an option getting those people out of their individual isolation by integrating them in online teams and teamwork. That's what society needs. That's what society wants. That's what behind the user interface rules. Thank you. Are there more questions uh, within the participants? Feel free to ask. Maybe I just volunteer with a comment or remark. Um, Ornella had pointed out from her survey that there is a lack of or a demand or requirement for memorandum of understanding. So um, addressing now participants not yet being included in our UX consortium. Um, Memorandum of understanding between European universities is a common approach and I really um, invite you all to go forward, find contacts on uh, links like these Erasmus days or ever and get into contact with other faculties in other countries of the European Union trying to develop those memorandums of understanding. Once implemented, once people from both sides being acquainted, having themselves physically or having agreed on uh, um, online, um, it is far easier to develop complex scenarios like the VCL framework implementation together and motivate students and make these arrangements not just a one advent a one time adventure, but developing it sustainable.
I may take the time uh, to just inform you about our second session. The link is uh, already posted in the chat and we will sh start shortly after 1 p.m. with the second session where my colleague Alexander Claus will go into deep about the VCL framework. After that, uh, a colleague from Epoca University will present the outcome of the evaluation of the spring semester regarding the experiences and challenges of COVID-19. After that, we will have our hands-on where uh, several e-learning tools are presented and also used to interact and uh, get a better and greater interactivity within your online teaching courses. Yes, I agree to that. So we will now have a 10 minutes a break and start shortly after 1 p.m. with the second session. Thank you everyone for listening and uh, see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and hope to see you back in 10 minutes. Bye bye. See you. <laughs>